Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to join the Ohio Aviation Association. Just a couple of reminders for everybody. You should be using your computer speakers to hear the webinar unless you're in a poor bandwidth or internet connection area. If you are, it's really best that you call in at that number on the screen or the phone number that was presented to you when you first logged on. Um, and, and there's a separate participant pin that should have been shown to you also. Please remember that if you are calling in to mute your line and turn off your computer speakers to reduce the feedback possibility. And of course, if you have any questions that you would like our presenter to answer, you will see in the lower right-hand side of the screen a Q&A box. You can type your question in there. And if we can't answer it right away, we will definitely follow up with you. Uh, at the moment, the way that we have it set up is that we will monitor the Q&A. And if it's, a, if it's an appropriate time that I can interrupt our presenter and ask her to answer it, we will do that. Otherwise, we'll wait to the end. Now, if somebody has the, um, if they don't mind, shoot me a note saying that you can hear us OK. Great, OK. People can hear us. Wonderful. So let's get to it. I will uh, talk to you about your presenter. Ms. Selena Shalad is currently serving as the Executive Director for the Alliance for Aviation Across America. Selena has been with the Alliance since its inception in 2007. Prior to that, she coordinated initiatives and campaigns for a number of high-profile nonprofit organizations, including the American Security Project, Mobilize.org, and a number of political campaigns, including in Arizona and Texas. She served as the Deputy Communications Director at the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee and worked for Senator Jack Reed, focusing on health care, banking, housing, and trade issues. She has two master's degrees, one from Georgetown University's McDonough School of Business and the other from the University of Chicago with a focus on public opinion and international relations. With that, Selena, I will turn it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Stacey, and thank you to everybody for taking the time to join us. I um, am honored and pleased uh, to be here and have the opportunity to talk to you all and uh, look forward to uh, what I hope will be a productive discussion. So uh, what I thought I would do is um, kind of just, uh, you know, delve in on uh, some of the, the challenges that kind of we as a community and general aviation and local airports all kind of face um, from sort of a, a 30,000 foot level in terms of, you know, public perceptions, legislative challenges, um, you know, why it's kind of important and often difficult to kind of get out our message. And then from there, kind of talk a little bit about the alliance and, and what we're doing. And then hopefully we can lead that into a discussion on how we can all work together and um, of course, and most importantly, be a resource and a support uh, for all of you in, in your important and local efforts. So um, <clears throat> with that, uh, I guess I'll just kind of delve in. Um, you know, in terms of uh, challenges that we kind of face as a, as a community, if you will, um, there, are, there are many. And um, of course, you know, I thought I'd touch on a few. There, there are quite a few out there, but I just touch on, I think, two of the kind of most prevalent, and then, you know, during our Q&A session, I'm happy to kind of delve into any others. But, um, you know, this past year, of course, um, Congress is currently, actually, right now as we speak, uh, down to the wire, and I can provide any updates on this as well at the end, but uh, down to the wire on working on an FAA reauthorization bill. Um, originally, that was going to be a five-year bill, and now it looks like they're discussing um, a three-year potentially uh, potential bill, uh, FAA reauthorization bill, and it looks like there's a bill that will get voted on next week in the House, um, and that does not include air traffic control privatization, um, which, you know, from our standpoint is is a good thing because, um, well, for a number of reasons, but uh, one of which is that that kind of controversial debate had kind of mired down 
uh, the progress on an FAA reauthorization bill for a long time, and as many of you know, resulted in, I think it was 23 consecutive short-term extensions uh, of funding, which uh, of course makes it difficult to do uh, any type of long-term planning and uh, poses challenges for AIP funding and, and all sorts of things. But, um, but you know, that, that sort of challenge and threat is, is always out there. And, um, you know, as I said, it has some kind of practical implications in terms of progress on the bill. And then, you know, from our standpoint at the Alliance, it's always given us uh, some cause for concern as well, just because of, um, you know, as a coalition that represents um, airports of all sizes and general aviation in particular, uh, you know, we, we worry about kind of a, uh, an air traffic control system being run by a board uh, that would be predominantly, um, you know, run by the largest commercial uh, interest and, and, you know, what would happen to many of those small and mid-sized airports uh, as you kind of turned over that governance structure. And just as you see from some of these quotes, there, there's still quite an effort to kind of push, push that uh, proposal both from the president and the administration and, and certainly many um, in the commercial aviation sector. So, you know, just something that we wanted you to be aware of and that we're kind of continuing to keep an eye on and um, always happy to kind of provide updates or, or anything on that front. So um, these are just some kind of recent um, quotes and pieces that have popped up that um, show that this, you know, while it's not in the current bill, we're thrilled about that. Um, it is kind of an issue that is still out there and that we need to keep an eye on. So, um, you know, the other thing that is just kind of always out there, and I think unfortunately will continue to be, particularly through the midterm elections, is, is really kind of just these ongoing challenges with the public perception of general aviation and, and smaller airports. Um, I didn't pull any of these clips, but, you know, over the years, there's also been a lot of, you know, news clips out there. And, you know, I, I suspect that, that someone's kind of fanning the flames with them. But, you know, news clips uh, in USA Today and other, and other outlets that kind of talk about how a particular small airport is a bridge to nowhere or, um, you know, only has, I don't know, a certain number of operations per week and do we really need to keep it open um, there's kind of always challenges on the general aviation front that, you know, general and business aviation are uh, really just kind of corporate sets and used by the wealthy 1%. And, you know, all of that, as you all well know, um, you know, over does not highlight and kind of glosses over uh, the immense value that the thousands of small and mid-sized airports uh, and general aviation have for you know, our national economy for supporting, um, you know, flight training, agricultural use, disaster relief, medical care, uh, all those important um, uses that are um, crucial to our, you know, local community and economy. And so I think, you know, that's, that's kind of, excuse me, part and parcel to where, you know, our, our organization is really trying to work and, um, raise that awareness. So and I think, you know, again, we have an important story to tell, not only in terms of the economic impact and the jobs that are supported by airports um, and general aviation, as you all know well and better than any of us, but um, also, you know, just all the critical services and activities that airports and general aviation uh, support at the local community level. So, you know, but, but people aren't aware of that. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many reporters or members, staff, or others that we speak to that really just kind of don't have any sense of, you know, how many local airports they may have in their district, how many uh, in their state, what that economic impact is, um, you know, what types of businesses and organizations use it. And, you know, part of that challenge is kind of getting that data, um, honestly. Um, but you know, we, we try to basically accumulate uh, as best we can the best data that's out there, even though it's um, definitely quite imperfect, and then, you know, work on trying to get that out there in kind of a public education way. So, um, 
you know, with that, there's kind of a lot of different ways uh, that we can do that. And so, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to run through now. So, uh, as you know, and as Stacey said, we're, uh, my organization is the Alliance for Aviation Across America. We were formed in 2007. Our goal really is uh, educating the public uh, and elected officials and media and, and others about the value and importance of general aviation in local airports. Uh, we're between six and 7,000 individuals and associations and have a footprint and an email list that's uh, quite a bit larger than that as well. But, um, you know, a couple of things about the Alliance. Uh, one, uh, we try to really reach out to and work with both aviation and non-aviation stakeholders as well. So while we have a lot of airports and pilots and general aviation groups as part of our coalition, we also have groups, um, for example, on our board like the League of Rural Voters and uh, a mayor in West Virginia and, um, you know, uh, the National Farmer Union. And we have sort of a lot of local rural organizations and mayors and chambers of commerce that are part of our coalition as well, you know, because it's important that we're not only working with our aviation stakeholders, but also our non-aviation stakeholders and not just kind of preaching to the choir, uh, but trying to get out that message to those who who might not be aware of the importance of aviation in their local community. So, um, so how are we kind of doing this? So um, one of the things that's uh, kind of a, a big and important signature item of ours is uh, our economic impact survey. So if you go to aviationacrossamerica.com uh, or .org, you'll see uh, our economic impact survey. It's kind of front and center on our website. And you can go to, um, you can get kind of the national economic impact data. Uh, for each state in the country, you can get um, the state economic impact data. And we pulled up Ohio here. Um, so, uh, I have to look at where the state is. It, we always get the question, and I'm sure you all have it, as to where our data comes from. And it's really um, a mishmash, if you will, of, of different data sources. So we pull from uh, the FAA. We pull from uh, some of our member organizations, like uh, HAI. Uh, we pull from um, the, we work very closely, um, at least we, we really try to, with our state aeronautics and aviation directors to get their direction uh, and data and, you know, kind of figure out what's the best uh, and most up-to-date data that we can use uh, on the site. But if you go to our page, you can see um, sort of these pins are all the airports across the, the state, and you have the um, economic impact, payroll, jobs, and these are generally the metrics um, that we have for each state. Um, in the country. So, uh, and as I say, they come from kind of a variety of different sources. Um, now, for many states in the country, um, and luckily uh, Ohio is one of them, uh, we can also pull more granular data. So, this, you know, hopefully is something that's kind of helpful and a resource to all of you, but um, you can actually put in um, a zip code or a congressional district and pull a report. Um, and that has the uh, payroll, economic impact of all the airports, um, you know, in a particular area, uh, radius, or congressional district. And, uh, you know, if you look through here and you see your airport and you see something that doesn't look right or off, feel free to <laughs> drop us a note um, or let us know. But as I said, I, uh, you know, we, we generally pull this either. There's two sources. One is... Um, a national report that we have as some kind of granular data, and the other is usually from uh, state reports, uh, whichever is the latest and greatest one uh, that we can work with the aeronautics director to kind of get our hands on. So this is a report that we pulled just as an example um, for the area around Ohio State University. And then we also pulled, um, you know, just Ohio District 5 here, just so you can see kind of what a congressional district um, map and, and report would look like. So you can generate this, again, for any zip code um, or congressional district for about 30 to 35 states um, in the country. So, you know, we kind of have this data, and 
um, you know, A, want to make sure that you all have it and have access to it and can give us your thoughts and feedback on it as well, of course. Um, but, you know, hope that it's helpful for you as you, um, you know, advocate for, for your airport in whatever capacity you might be. But, you know, then in terms of what we're doing with it, uh, one of the things that's been kind of another signature item has been, um, you know, reaching out and doing proclamations. So uh, we've worked with a number of uh, governors across the country. Every, every state in the country at this point has done uh, a proclamation recognizing at least aviation and most of them recognizing general aviation in particular. Uh, and then many uh, states have now done multiple uh, proclamations for many for many years in a row and then in building off of that uh, we've actually worked with a lot of local elected officials and mayors to get local uh, proclamations that highlight the value of general aviation and local airports and in, in a community um, and and those are helpful you know just to kind of have that I think we've gotten something like 750 of them across the country uh, in local communities and you know, they are helpful not only um, in just kind of having that validation from an independent elected official to say, hey, you know, this um, this is an important part of our community. Uh, this is how much economic activity it supports. These are the types of services that it supports. But also, you know, it, it helps us then to generate another layer of activity, which is press coverage. And so every time that we have a local proclamation, you know, we try and kind of send that around to the media outlets and let them know, hey, this month is um, aviation or general aviation uh, appreciation month. You know, this is why it's important. And then we kind of try and get some local or media as well on that. And then, you know, we try to make sure that the local congressional offices and others see that as well so that, um, you know, again, we're not just preaching to the choir from the choir, but we're, um, you know, we're telling members of the media and and our stakeholders and congressional staff and others about the value and importance of general aviation but it's not just us saying it it's governors and mayors and other people as well so um this is another story that we worked on that was actually less um policy or legislative or proclamation related but you know again just kind of highlighted how general aviation and local airports really provide a critical lifeline when it comes to medical care, particularly in rural communities. So, um, you know, these are the types of things that we really want to be partnering and working with you all on. So, I know you all have your day-to-day -day jobs and that it's not, you know, it's not, I'm sure, comprised of uh, spending your hours calling media outlets and trying to uh, gain awareness about your airport, maybe, because you've probably got other priorities. But, you know, that's where we can be helpful if you've got kind of some um, <clears throat> charitable medical flights or, you know, a local event or, you know, just a good story to tell or economic impact. We can kind of work with you all on on trying to raise awareness of that. Um, so, so happy to do so. Um, you know, the other thing that we do is really encourage uh, members to write op-eds. So, you know, it's just a great way where you can get five paragraphs of kind of, you know, your message. And, and they're really, um, you know, op-eds are kind of not easy, but uh, we often, you know, have some success in helping our local members to get those placed in local uh, media outlets. And this is kind of an example of one uh, that we recently did uh, from a local airport director that kind of, raise awareness about the value of general aviation. Uh, this is a, another one that we did uh, in a local paper uh, from the president of Pilots for Patients to talk about, you know, how general aviation and local airports are helping to get, um, you know, kids to medical care for free. And then this is another one in Iowa, actually, from the Chamber of Commerce, um, you know, talking about how local companies are using the airport to stay better connected, um, the economic impact of the local airport and just, you know, what an important uh, source of economic activity it is for the local community. So if this is something you're interested in, again, we're happy to help and support those efforts uh, in whatever way we can. Um, 
one other thing, uh, you know, that we're doing is, you know, encouraging our members to take their message directly to uh, members of Congress. So, uh, you know, we've often uh, throughout the years kind of uh, done a lot of uh, work to kind of set up local meetings. So, you know, if you have an event um, that you're doing at your local airport, um, if you think that, you know, we could set up something, we're happy to work with you and then kind of work um, the, you know, federal front to kind of see if we can get a local member of Congress to come and, um, you know, tour the airport and see kind of firsthand the activity and all the different things that are going on there. And this is just, you know, this is helpful on a number of fronts. Again, just kind of getting out that message about the value and importance of the local airport, and also it's kind of an opportunity to raise um, and connect the dots between some of the kind of federal funding, uh, legislative issues, and how that affects the local airport. So, um, you know, I can't tell you the number one thing that we saw over the last um, year or so when we were kind of in this um, I don't want to say battle, but, uh, you know, this challenge with air traffic control privatization is that members would say to us, well, how does it affect our local airports? And, you know, how does AIP funding affect our local airports? And how does, you know, ATC modernization and, and, and you know, all of these different policy and legislative issues, how do they affect, you know, local airports and operators? And so I think these are a good opportunity to kind of you know, have those discussions and, and get those message points out there. And we're happy to help kind of support um, support you in pulling that together. Um, just, you know, other things that we're doing, um, you know, this is an example of, of something that we um, worked with TRB, Transportation uh, Research Board, on, uh, you know, kind of uh, what, what we contributed to kind of an on online resource and help to really put them in touch with local airport directors um, and stakeholders throughout the country to really see, you know, what what are what are the roles of the local airports, how do they support the local community, um, and you know, this is all part of an Academy of Sciences initiative to kind of uh, raise awareness about the value and importance and, and understand kind of what community expectations are with regard to airport roles. So this is an initiative that we um, participated in. And then another one that's actually not here is um, a joint uh, initiative that we have with NASEO, so the National Association of State Aviation Officials, um, and AASHTO, the Association of State and Highway Transportation Officials. We take basically our economic impact survey and put that into a printed report with each state having its own page. And then we actually bring that, walk that up to um, to members of Congress, to their offices, so that, you know, they physically have that information in hand and can kind of see the value and importance of their local airports. So, you know, all these things are just, you know, part and parcel to kind of getting out the message about the importance of general aviation and, and you know, how and being a resource not only um, to you all but also to to members of Congress and and to other stakeholders in the community. So um, with that, it looks like <laughs> it looks like I have ended quite early. Um, uh, Stacey, I apologize for that, but uh, I guess that leaves us a lot of uh, time for kind of discussion and and um, you know questions and and all of that. So hopefully um, hopefully we'll be able to to have some discussion and. Um, I can answer any questions and, and let you know kind of in particular if there's any questions on any updates that are going on kind of legislatively or at the national level or anything else, uh, happy to take those. So uh, I guess well, thank you. I'll yeah, turn that yeah. over to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Selena. I really appreciate mm -hmm. the information that you have provided. I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, just to prime the pump, if anybody of our participants has questions, remember you can type them in and Selena would be more than happy to answer them for you. So Selena, um, yes, we, we actually post any proclamations on our website, and we appreciate it. We actually get them from you. Um, uh, for those that are participating, if they might not know how to get their local city or mayor or whomever um, to, to do such a proclamation, do you have advice for them? What are the steps that they ought to be taking to try to get their city to uh, take a proclamation? 
Sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's it's often a long process, and I would say it's a different process for each um, state and for each local uh, entity. So, <clears throat> in some cases, as you know well, you have uh, a mayor who's kind of a an office of one, and <laughs> you can call up and kind of coordinate and talk to him or her, and um, you know, kind of get that through. And in many other cases, um, you know, it's sort of a longer process. So. Uh, basically, you know, we can work with uh, you and members to um, work through that process. We have kind of some draft proclamation language that we find, you know, usually works well and is kind of typical of the sort of template that uh, many local and state offices use when they do proclamations, uh, which is, you know, I don't say common, but a relatively common uh, thing that is done by a gubernatorial and, and local mayoral offices. And so we can provide that to you. We can help provide that to them. Uh, and then we can kind of work hand in hand through that process in whatever way is, is most helpful to you all um, to help get that done. So whether it's supporting your members doing that or us kind of taking the lead, or whatever is most helpful. But we have that, you know, template language and can kind of come up with a process together on how to best um, plot that course and get that done. Okay, wonderful. I, I appreciate that information. Um, so I, I, I hear you about the, the data and people might question um, the, where the data comes from. Uh, it, it seems like it follows pretty closely to the last uh, aviation system, or excuse me, airport system plan report that was generated by the state of Ohio. Um, do you happen to know off the top of your head if that is, in fact, the source of the data um, that you that you show for the state of Ohio? Could, I don't know if you know that off the top of your head. I am I am ninety percent sure that that is the case, um, and that then the other data in terms of number of airports, um, you know, pilots and others may come from different sources, including uh, the FAA, DOT, and others. But I believe that's right in terms of the number of jobs um, and economic impact. I believe that in, in the case of Ohio, that's from the latest uh, system plan. And I would say okay. for most of the states, that's the case. Um, you know, at this, and it's interesting, about, you know, six, seven years ago when we were starting this effort, or perhaps even a little bit more, um, you know, there there many states didn't have uh, their own statewide studies, and so we were kind of relying on national data uh, that kind of merged global uh, gamma and the SAO study and, and kind of using that. But now I think many, most of the states kind of have some type of data, even though, even if it might be a little bit old. But, um, but yeah, in most cases, uh, and I believe in the case of Ohio, the, the primary economic and jobs data usually comes from the state aviation system plans or studies. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and, and relative to its age, I mean, th we, this happens to be a topic for us in discussions with the um, ODOT Aviation. Uh, when can we get another update? This is a 2014 report based on, you know, 2012-2013 data. And, you know, as you know, some of the latest news is about how uh, the United States has come out of the recession. Uh, Ohio, unfortunately, apparently hasn't come out as strong of it as most other states have. Uh, so we, we know that those numbers are a little lacking, and um, which leads me to my next question of, do you guys have a, a, a functionality in your website that does an adjustment, or you truly just wait for the next report that comes out and you update it at that point? Yes, um, it is the uh, labor of love and pain, <laughs> where uh, basically, you know, on a sort of twice a year or so basis, we just kind of go through and sort of start that process of reaching out to all of the state aviation directors, kind of just checking in, seeing where they are with their data, you know, what's the latest and greatest that they have. Um, and usually it's kind of in light of us uh, going to print with that economic impact report that I mentioned, uh, which we're actually going through right now with the hopes of, um, you know, being able to distribute that out after the first of the year. So, um, so 
yeah, it's really there. If you see something on the site that looks outdated, um, you know, basically the imperfect answer is that um, we try to keep that as up to date as possible based on kind of just a process that we, you know, sort of an imperfect process that we've developed internally to try and kind of, you know, at least twice a year, you know, undergo kind of a, an inventory of the local data and the sources and figure out kind of, okay, what's, you know, what's new, what's been updated, and what do we need to kind of go through and, and update. So, uh, so that's kind of what we do. And then, you know, and then we kind of rely on, you know, members such as yours. So if that, if someone sees something and they say, hey, this isn't right, you know, we can kind of reconcile it. And so, you know, I always ask for people's patience on that. If you see something that's not right, you know, it may not necessarily surprise me. We kind of do our best, but um, we kind of resigned ourselves a long time ago to not let the perfect be the enemy of the good and to say, you know, even if it's we've got something that's out of date or um, that needs to be updated or that we catch and need to update, it's better to have something on there and keep that process moving than to have nothing. So, um, so we look forward to that ongoing conversation. Sure, great. No, thank you for that information. I appreciate that. So those of our members who are participating, uh, maybe they could go ahead and find their airport and um, and compare it and see what you know if it makes sense and provide that that feedback if necessary. So on another topic uh, that you mentioned about ask you know when there are national things changing like the ATC privatization. Does Alliance for Aviation Across America put out a uh, paper, if you will, uh, about things to consider? And the reason why I say this is, as you're aware, sometimes small airports are very thinly manned. Um, it's, it's tough. Sometimes they mow the grass, and sometimes they have other people to do it. It just varies based on the size of the airport. And sometimes they cannot stay abreast of all of the information. Does your organization happen to produce things to look out for, things that might impact you so that um, you can be another resource to, for them to reach out to and, and stay in touch with that kind of thing? Yeah, um, so yes and no. Um, generally, our mission is more kind of public education and awareness. However, on some issues and it, you know, where we just sort of significantly hear from our members that this is important and something that they want us to, you know, kind of weigh in and, and stay abreast of, we have done. So, um, you know, I know we, we certainly have had that be the case um, with ATC privatization. We just, you know, overwhelmingly heard from our members that this is something uh, that was important to them, that they wanted to kind of stay abreast of. And so, um, you know, we've, We've definitely um, we've definitely done quite a bit on air traffic control privatization. Uh, we also have, if you go to our website, some other kind of issue papers. Um, we have one on agricultural use of um, general aviation. We have one on AIP. Uh, we have done some things on EAS. So I would say, you know, those uh, policy legislative issues that really intersect with um, access, airport and general aviation access, particularly from small and mid-sized communities, uh, is, is where we have kind of delved in a little bit more um, and kind of, you know, put some issue papers out there um, and, and kind of done some stuff. And if you look at our website, um, there's, um, you know, there's quite a bit on ATC. We actually work with some other groups on a poll. Um, you know, on air traffic control privatization to see what people thought about that. Uh, we've done something on law enforcement, Medicare, medical care, and emergency use of general aviation. Uh, we've done stuff on a big issue that's come up in this debate is sort of, you know, whether or not we should model our U.S. system after foreign systems um, that have privatized. So we've done quite a bit on that um, on our website. And then, you know, we've also gathered what kind of some of the others have said about that. Um, as well, uh, you know, kind of some other stakeholders and mayors have said about that as well. So, you know, yes, uh, the long, long answer to your question is uh, on some issues we have weighed in and there are resources on our website 
uh, for people to stay abreast of those issues, particularly where it comes to AIP, uh, privatization, and kind of general use of uh, general aviation in local airports by particular sectors like law enforcement and medical care. And if there's something that's not there, um, you know, that people want to know about, you know, we, we just encourage them to reach out to us and we can, you know, we'd be happy to put together, you know, kind of a little brief or talking points or information or, you know, a bundle of articles on any issue that might be important or that they want to kind of get in, get some further uh, information on. Okay, thank you. Um, so one last question I have for you. Um, do you have any recommendations for our members who have made repeated attempts to invite their local state reps or senators to come out to their airport and have been unsuccessful at getting them to show up or um, pay much attention in that? Do you have any recommendations or advice for them? Yeah, I would say two things. Um, you know, one, keep at it, and two, we can help. Um, it is very, very difficult. Um, as uh, someone and, and my team who works on this quite a bit, uh, the scheduling is always difficult. Uh, getting a response is always difficult. Uh, getting something locked down. So, you know, often when we're kind of trying to work with our local members on getting, you know, some type of meeting or event on the books that includes a member of Congress or their staff, it is a long and, and kind of labor-intensive process. Um, and so, you know, we we know a lot of those schedulers. A lot of that scheduling kind of takes place out of D.C. So we can kind of help with that. And But even in light of that, I mean, sometimes it has happened where, you know, we'll get a meeting and it's like, you know, okay, we've got a slot. We've been trying for – we've had this invite in for seven or eight months haven't heard anything back, we keep pinging them, and then suddenly, you know, we get an email that, okay, we can come this Friday. And uh, I can't tell you how many times that's happened. So I would say keep at it, and, um, you know, we're happy to work with you on that to try and um, help as best we can to with that process. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate your time today. I'm going to, uh, at this point, bring up OAA's closing uh, slides here. So everybody, thank you so much for joining our webinar. Um, upcoming webinars, our next webinar will be uh, about social media for airports. The date is still to be determined, so stay informed by reading our email blast and or checking our website. And very last, make sure you connect with us. We have our website right there on the screen for you, ohioaviation.org. And like us on Facebook and follow us. We've got, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, Selena, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if, if anybody has additional questions for her that you are not able to consider or get up on the Q&A section today, feel free to email me directly. Uh, you can send that to oaa at ohioaviation.org. And I can feed or funnel that question to Selena, and I'm sure we can get her to answer that. Selena, thank you so much, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you, and, and just um, in case anybody has anything, uh, uh, our phone number is 202-223-9523, uh, and um, uh, my email address is selena at aviationacrossamerica.org. So if anybody uh, has any questions or follow-up questions or need any other information, feel free to, to reach out to us as well. And, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you all and look forward to working with you all uh, in the future. Thanks, Elena. Bye-bye.